I want to review this point, that there's a, always a connection between angular quantities and linear quantities, and in particular I want to talk about angular acceleration being related to linear acceleration. The connection is pretty simple because if we think about a, a point on a unit circle that's rotating around by a certain angle theta, then this thing is going to sweep out a certain part of the circumference s of the, the perimeter of the circle. s is measured in meters, it's a linear quantity. And if we went all the way around the circle, because this red line swept around like the hand of a clock, then we would go through one circumference, uh, 2 pi r, or, if we went, or one uh, revolution, or 2 pi radians. This equation, s is r theta, is always our connection that we have to remember when we want to go between linear and angular quantities. So we can go from s is r theta to velocities and to accelerations. Let's remember that velocity is just the time derivative of position, or it's the rate of change of that position. And so a velocity is a delta s over delta t. How much did s change for every in unit of change of, delta, of time? Now the radius isn't changing of this thing. It's always sweeping around in the circle. So if you think back to what in our equation s is equal to r theta up here, r isn't changing. It's the theta that's changing. So really we can say uh, velocity is going to be r times delta theta for delta t. And delta theta over delta t is otherwise known as the angular velocity. So v is equal to r omega is our equation that relates linear velocity and angular velocity. Now the tangential acceleration, this ve vector right here, is a measure of how fast that linear velocity is changing. And we can again say that a which is a, is a rate of change of velocity over uh, delta v over delta t. Again, if we think back to our equation for what v is, r isn't changing, so it's omega that's changing. And we have that the linear acceleration a is equal to r times alpha. That's going to be a common theme, that when you get confused about what's the connection between linear and angular quantities, they're often related by factors of the radius at which you're doing the motion. This particular acceleration we just wrote down is not the same as some other accelerations that we've written down in circular motion. There's also something called the centripetal acceleration. The tangential acceleration points like a this. It's always off to the side, tangential to the, the vector uh, or the, on the tangent line or off the circle. We're also familiar with something called the centripetal acceleration, which always points back toward the center of a uh, rotation of an object. Remember that the centripetal acceleration would be there and be non-zero even if something's moving at constant speed or even constant angular speed whereas this particular acceleration the tangential one is not going to be uh, non-zero if omega is constant this one is the the kind of acceleration that we're talking about when omega is changing the centripetal acceleration was sometimes written down as v squared over r but now we know v is equal to r omega so we could substitute that in and we can say it's r omega squared. So even an object moving uh, with constant omega has a centripetal acceleration that's non-zero, uh, but that object will have a tangential acceleration that's equal to zero. And we have to remember that there's two kinds of acceleration. A, a vector that points in toward the center of the arc, the thing that actually keeps it moving in the, in the first place, and there might be another vector, a sub t, which shows that the object is speeding up as it's moving around in the circle. So it's important to keep these two kinds of acceleration separate.